Welcome to the warm up, and thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Ted Madden. We're crowning state champions this weekend. Let's get you warmed up. The girls are in the Alamo Dome trying to finish off that season long quest for a state championship. Let's preview some of the Houston area teams who made it to their final destination in the lineup, presented by So Chill Chips and Salsa. You've heard it a million times, defense wins championships. Well, the Pearland Lady Oilers aim to prove that adage true this weekend in San Antonio. In the 6A Region 3 tournament, Pearland did what they do best, shut their opponents down. The Lady Oilers held defending Region 3 champ Summer Creek to just 26 points and showed why Pearland isn't fun to play against. With Riley Grays in the paint and Janae Tucker and Naya Hardy on the perimeter, Pearland has only allowed an average of 31 points a game during the postseason. They'll need to dig even deeper Friday night when they face two-time defending 6A champs DeSoto in the state semifinals. Pearland hasn't made it to state since 1980, but this team should be up to the challenge. It may have been 43 years since Pearland has made it to state, but in 5A, Fulshear has never made it until now. Granted, the Chargers have only been in existence since 2016, but it's still quite an accomplishment. Fulshear had to grind out two hard-fought wins in the Region 3 tournament, but grind it out they did, including a 45-43 win over Hendrickson in the final. Senior Essio Beveray was the catalyst for the Chargers' surge through the region. In the final, she scored 23 points, grabbed 10 boards, and had two steals. Kimora Lopez also stepped up big for the Chargers. They will need a third option for sure in San Antonio as they will face stiff competition starting with Lubbock Cooper tonight. Cooper just finished knocking off the state's number one team, Lubbock Monterey. Warm up your game day with the authentic flavors of ancient cooking. So thin, so crisp, so good, so chill. The Woodlands were must-see basketball all season long because of their star combo guard, Shea Eberwein. We caught up with the South Dakota commit on the recruiting trail. Hi, my name is uh, Shea Eberwein. I go to the Woodlands High School and I am a combo guard. Uh, Coach Peterson. Um, he started recruiting me at Utah. Um, that's kind of a uh, funny story. He came down, watched me practice. Um, he had a really good presentation with Utah. And I'm actually the only player he's ever missed a flight for. We were in the film room at the Woodlands High School and we were talking and he looked down at his uh, watch and he saw the time and it was like an hour and a half till his flight took off. And he tried to get an Uber there and then his car or his uber got pulled over so i'm the only person he's missed a flight for but um definitely coach peterson's morals the way he runs a program the way he coaches the way he showed me that he wanted me to come play for him and how much belief in he had in me i just felt it was right i felt that i owed him to give that type of faith back to him so that's why i picked south dakota I say my strengths on the court um, is my length and my athleticism. Um, a lot of people see me, I'm 6'5", uh, I'm a white guard, so they think I'm a, sh a shooter and I can shoot the ball, but I want to get downhill and I'm trying to go to the rim. Uh, I'm super aggressive going towards the rim, which kind of ca catches people off guard. I want to see if you can stay in front of me and if you can't, I'm going to go to the rim and once you back off, I'm going to shoot it. But I think I catch a little, a lot of people off guard because they see me and they have the stereotype, which is no problem. But and then they're not expecting me to come out and do what I do. Um, I'm trying to come at you. Uh, it's psychological warfare. So I want to get in your head. I want to make you lose the game before, before we've even stepped on the court. So that's what. But those, those are definitely my strengths. Hundred percent. Um, going into uh, my sophomore year, um, the coaches told me I had a chance to be pretty special. 
they told me, I remember sitting in the coach's room, it was like after my sophomore year, and the expectations they had for me, and they said, you could be probably the best player to ever come to the Woodlands. And when that hit me, I was like, like I was kind of like sky high, right? And then he hit me right after that, and he's like, you got a lot of work to do though. And I went home and I just thought about it, and I really embraced what he said. And I just, I worked. I mean, I was up at 5 a.m. lifting. I'd be shooting. I'd have shooting workouts by myself two times a day during the summer, and I was with Chris once a day, um, uh, training to become a better guard. And um, coming from my sophomore year, I was like 6'4", like 160. And coming into my junior year, I was like 6'5", 185. So um, everybody was kind of like, this kid really worked hard and my name was kind of getting out there after being with coach TJ and uh, like I've had kids come up to me at the Woodlands just asking like what I did over the summer like training wise and um, and really just my consistency that's all I told him is just stay consistent it's not always going to be nice it's not always going to be sweet sometimes you're going to feel like basketball is punishing you I felt like that many times but after all the 5 a.m. lifts and the thousands and thousands of makes and the trainings with Chris it's just it, it's paying off and now I'm taking that next step I still got a lot of more work to do um, but, but I'm definitely excited I mean it's definitely a blessing but if I want to be remembered by one thing it's my work ethic. The boys' regional tournament starts on Friday, and as usual, Houston has several teams who are favorites to make it to the state tournament. Let's preview some of those regionals in the hype. Let's look at the 6A Region 3 tournament, where usually a Houston area team advances to state. However, this year, Houston teams have a tough obstacle to deal with first, Beaumont United. The Timberwolves won the last two 5A state titles and are now in 6A and ranked number two in the state. They are led by Washington commit Wesley Yates. United will face a newcomer to the regional tournament, Katie Jordan. The Warriors surprised everyone with a 21-point blowout of state-ranked Cy Creek in the quarterfinals. Do they have enough firepower to hang with United? That's the question. In the other semifinal, Seven Lakes, another Katie ISD team, takes on Clear Falls. Both teams are district champs, but only Seven Lakes was truly expected to be here. The Spartans took down Stratford in the quarterfinals and are led by junior A.J. Bates. Clear Falls is coming off a come-from-behind upset of Pearland Dawson, and they go as far as Orlando Horton Jr. will take them. This should be a good matchup. In 6A Region 2, Cy Falls heads up to Lufkin to face DeSoto in a semifinal game. Of the four teams in this regional tournament, the Golden Eagles will be considered the favorite due to super senior JoJo Tugler. Cy Falls hasn't had a competitive game this entire postseason as their defense has dominated Klein, College Park, and Klein Collins thus far. The second semifinal will have Klein Oak battling Mansfield Legacy out of North Texas. The Panthers were the third place team out of 15-6A, but they have taken down Langham Creek, Grand Oaks, and Cy Spring to make it to the regional tournament. They'll need some more Oak Magic to win two more games and head to state. Last week, Cy Falls won our defensive title belt. We talk about how they did it in the buzz. Cy Falls has been playing in your face defense for the entire season, and it really showed up last Friday in the area round. Against College Park, the Golden Eagles made sure the game was never in doubt as they led 28 to eight at the half. The second half was more of the same as Cy Falls finished off the Cavs 58-38. This week's defensive title belt could come out of the 5A Region 3 tournament. Many have talked about the explosive Fort Ben Marshall offense, but it will be their defense that has to step up in the regionals. With a possible meeting against second-ranked Colleen Ellison, the Buffs' D will have to be on point. That's going to do it for today's show. For even more high school basketball content, be sure to follow us on our social media accounts, including Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm Ted Madden. Thanks for watching, and I hope you get out to see some great basketball action.